We have been talking this morning about the news out from Moderna that its coronavirus vaccine trial showed a 94.5% efficacy rate and also does not need to be um, stored in as cold conditions as the Pfizer vaccine. We got very positive news on that front last week. To talk about this, we are joined by the CEO of Moderna, that's Stefan Vancel, as well as our Anjali Kemlani, who covers the industry for us. And Anjali, I'm going to toss it over for you to you uh, to begin the conversation. Thanks, Julian. Thank you, Stefan, for joining us again. I know that you just got off the call with all the uh, government officials who were touting the results. I want to jump into the, the efficacy right now. We know that that's a key metric that you uh, sort of outshone the competitor at this point. But what would you say is sort of the key right now when it comes to who this best benefits uh, in, in the broader population? We know that uh, each vaccine is obviously going to have a, a different forte. Who do you feel is going to be uh, best suited by your vaccine right now? Well, good morning and thank you for having me back. Uh, it's a bit too early to tell exactly the population because uh, the data is blinded to us as a company. As you know, this is run by an independent NIH uh, investigator group uh, and safety board. But what we know so far uh, as this first kind of cut of the data as of, you know, 95 participants. We know that 90 of those participants were on placebo and got disease, mm -hmm. and five that were on the vaccine got disease as well. That is how you know, the team determined the 94.5% with very good kind of statistical uh, strength. The other piece that is almost more exciting to me is the secondary endpoint, which was severe disease. As we know with vaccination, what are we trying to do? We're trying to prevent people from getting disease, and if you get disease, you want to prevent them to get to the hospital. And those are where the severe disease cases are very important. And so out of the 95 cases, we had 11 cases of severe disease. 11 were on placebo, and zero were on the vaccine arm. Which means that if you get the vaccine based on the data we have so far, is your very high chance of getting protected or having no disease, that's the 94%. But if you get disease, most probably you will get mild disease, not severe disease. And that's, of course, a game changer. If we could have a vaccine that will prevent people from getting severe disease, that will lead to hospitalization, that will lead, in a worst case scenario, to ICU and the worst outcome to death, that will be a game changer in terms of, of course, reducing hospitalization and death, the impact on the economy. And so this is why we are now getting ready to prepare in the coming weeks the filing to the EUA to the FDA. We uh, want to finish the study. The final analysis has always been set up at 151 cases. We had 95 as of last Wednesday. And given the number of cases in the country, it's going to be a matter of days, not weeks, that we get the full data set. Uh, because that's very important to your question, we'll be able to analyze the elderly, you know, African-American, you know, Latino, Latinx, and to really understand is a vaccine working across the board. We had a good, a good demographic sample in that 95 participants. So we are cautiously optimistic, but it's only when we'll have a final analysis filed to the FDA that we will be able to sit down with the CDC to figure out who is best for the Moderna vaccine. Thanks. And I know that one of the things uh, you were uh, previously asked, uh, is there an update on the timeline right now? Because you are looking at producing uh, 20 million doses by the end of the year um, with more uh, than 40 million, I believe, per month after that. So as it stands right now, is there an update to the timeline based on who can get this vaccine first and when you anticipate the general public will be able to receive doses? Yes. So this will be determined by the CDC. Uh, when they will see the full data set from the different vaccines, when they will be submitted to the regulators, i.e. to the FDA. So we are a few weeks away from the data being available to the FDA, for then the CDC being able to determine who should get the vaccine first. So we think that in the EUA period, this would be mostly used for uh, elderly persons, for people with high risk, like, you know, diabetes, uh, people that are uh, obese, uh, as you have seen, those are uh, comorbidity factors that have been reported by the CDC. Uh, and then what we anticipate then is to file for a full BLA, a, a full product approval, where anybody above the age of 18 could get access to the product. I think this is more kind of a late Q1 timeframe, where any Americans who want vaccination can get access to it. 
And then the next piece is the, the young. Uh, we are going to start very soon a study in teenagers. As typical with vaccine, you want to wait to have safety, but also efficacy of a vaccine to have a good sense that the vaccine can drive a benefit before you start dosing the, the teenagers. And so we're going to start teenagers very soon. I'm hoping we'll get teenager data by the end of June so that in the July, August timeframe, teenagers can be vaccinated. So they can go back to a normal school year with their teachers and the staff being vaccinated in the spring, uh, the students, you know, in the in the summer. And then we're also going to go down early next year in age by going down to younger children, down to toddlers. But those who have to be very, very careful for obvious safety reasons. You have to start at a lower dose and you go down slowly in age as you get the validation that the vaccine is well tolerated and makes uh, enough antibodies. So that will take a bit of a while. I anticipate this maybe more toward the end of 2021 for younger children. Absolutely. And pivoting to the stock right now, up more than 10% on this news, obviously a very exciting day. But in the recent past, we've seen a little bit of focus on some of that uh, share activity, sales of shares by executives like yourself and others uh, across the board, not just with Moderna, but there have been other companies. Are, do you have any thoughts on that, on the criticism and, and sort of the, the focus on that right now? I mean, if you think about it, uh, Moderna has been a private for eight years. Uh, I invested in every private round of a company. I'm actually the only investor in the world who put cash at the same financial terms as every other investors across those things. And when the company became public in December 18, we set up plans to provide a little bit of liquidity. Uh, and that's basically what you are seeing. So because of the success of a company, I think there's a lot of scrutiny. But if you look at the plans that are happening, they have been happening when the stock was at 20. Uh, we had no idea that the stock was going to be at this place because none of us anticipated the pandemic, obviously, in December 18 when we went public. And so I think it's pretty typical. I think there's just a lot of focus on it right now. I hope people realize, at least in my case, most of my wealth is still in Moderna stock and will remain for a long time. I think it's just the beginning. As I've said on our last earning call, 2021 is going to be an inflection year for the company. We now know that Moderna can make effective vaccine. This was proven today. Moderna is a platform. mRNA is an information molecule. We have a CMV vaccine, for example, that's going to start phase three next year. We believe it's a two to five billion annual peak sales product. There is no CMV vaccine approved on the market. There are 10,000 kids in this country every year that are going to be born with birth defects because their mom will get CMV infection during pregnancy. No vaccine on the market. We have a high probability of success of this product now. And now Moderna at the end of Q3 at $4 billion of cash. So think about what we can do by now knowing that the technology is the risk and investing in more product to scale up the company. This is just the beginning, big inflection point next year. Stefan, it's Julie uh, again here. I, I want to ask about what the coronavirus vaccine specifically, obviously it would be great news for society and, and humankind, whoever comes out with a successful vaccine. Talk to me more about what it means for Moderna. Is this going to be a profitable product for you? So I think it means two things for Moderna. Uh, the short term in terms of product sales and profit, and then the long term, which is the validation of a platform. Because unlike other pharmaceutical products, if you look at you know, big pharmaceutical companies, there is no correlation between their products in the pipeline. In our case, it is not the same. The CMV vaccine uses exactly the same technology than the COVID vaccine. So in the, in the de-risking of a platform, I think the, the value is really incredible. In the short term, what we've said is we're going to make a reasonable profit on the vaccine. We have been you know, selling recently a vaccine around $37 per dose for low orders, I'm talking millions of doses, when governments place very large order, like the US government placed a $100 million order, as you recall uh, a month or two ago. Uh, the, the price was at $25 per dose because of volume discount. And so if you think about it, you know, we generated a billion dollar of cash from operation in Q3. We went from having lost money for eight years to our first quarter turning uh, operating cash flow of a billion dollar generated in the quarter. So I think next year is going to be an interesting year where I believe we're going to generate a lot of cash. We have $4 billion of cash and no debt at the end of Q3. 
So I think the company is going to be extremely well positioned. By the end of 2021, we're going to have a lot of product in the pipeline, a very strong cash balance so that we can scale Moderna to really maximize the value of this platform in the next five to 10 years. Stefan, will you be speaking to President-elect Joe Biden today? And how concerned are you that uh, President-elect Joe Biden is not getting the information he needs from, from President Trump? And will that impact the, the distribution of your vaccine? So the distribution of a vaccine is being currently handled by Operation Valve Speed, you know, Dr. Slawi and General Perna. Uh, we are talking to them almost on a daily basis. They are coordinating with the CDC, with Matt Kesson, who, as you know, has been selected by the U.S. government to do the distribution. The next big step is really going to be around data, uh, the FDA data that the CDC will use to decide who gets what vaccine. So all that process is, is clearly ongoing. Uh, and I know there are daily discussions with different members of the government.